The Decision Dome has been the icon of the Knock Screw game show since its inception. Allowing chickens to randomly select the games played was innovative and fun, but it came at the price of time and convenience. This led to the removal of the Decision Dome and the sadness of our fans. But with a new season comes new technology. Minecraft has evolved to the point where almost anything is possible, and we seized the opportunity to reintroduce the legend. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Avondale, and I give you the Decision Dome 2.0. The Decision Dome 2.0 improves on the original in several ways. First of all, games can be switched in and out of the dome with a few simple button presses, instead of the game signs being built in place by hand. The chickens are counted automatically and announced, instead of being hand counted. The Decision Dome 2.0 also manages the teleports, talks to the contestants through Job, and provides pretty animations. Now that you know what it does, let's talk about how it works. The Decision Gnome 2.0 runs in three stages. The reveal, the release, and the teleport. The reveal starts weeks before the episode is filmed. We want to provide a fair balance of PvP, puzzle, and parkour based games. So we handpick eight games to prepare for the Decision Dome. Once these are completed and tested, they are added into the memory cells. Each game is stored in a slice and contains the data to place the art in any of the eight locations, read the name when the game is selected, and teleport everyone once the game has been chosen. Games can be added to or removed from the decision dome with a few button presses. Selecting a game from storage loads it into temporary memory and the apply button loads it into the first available slot in the operating panel. Yeah. Once the games are in place, we host the match, and the contestants arrive. Pressing this button reveals the games, which are applied from the operating panel below into their corresponding locations in the decision dome. Now that the contestants know what games are up for grabs, it's time to choose one. Pushing this button releases the chickens, and everything else happens automatically. While the chickens fall, the tiles are filled to create the spinning animation. After a certain time, the chickens stop spawning and are given time to fall and disperse. The walls between the tiles come up, and this is where the real fun starts. Using the execute command, each chicken checks to see if they have a specific color of wool at a specific Y value relative to their position. Two blocks under the floor of the dome, there are matching pie slices of colored wool. Orange wool has a data value of 1, so it represents tile 1, magenta for 2, and so on. There are 8 command blocks to test this, one for each tile, and they have a success count equal to the number of chickens in their tile. Using the stats command, these values are applied to a scoreboard objective. Seeing this scoreboard, we already know which game won, but we still need to get the game to know. To do this, a 20 Hz clock subtracts one from each tile valued at two or greater, until there are none left at two or greater. The result of this means the winning tile, or tiles, now have a value of one. If there's only one, we have a winner. A single command triggers the winning animations in the operating panel. If there are two or more, Job initiates the tiebreak sequence. Each tile still in contention puts its win condition command block into a dispenser, which randomly chooses the winner. It's time for the butcher to do his thing, which gives the decision dome time to ready the teleports. When the game gets selected, there are armor stands that get spawned and TP'd into place at the selected game. At the same time, Camera 3 is teleported to the game. This camera forces Minecraft to keep those chunks loaded, which allows it to recognize the armor stands there. 
when the butcher is done, a button is pressed which drops the contestants into their teleport tubes. A clock detects each contestant and plays the drop sound to them when they enter the tube. When a contestant is detected at a certain depth into the pipe, they are teleported to their team's armor stand located at the selected game. When all of the contestants have been detected by the pipe, the floors close and the help bots, cameras, commentators, Nox crew members, and spectating Patreons are all TP'd to their armor stands. The decision dome blacks out the selected tile and picture and resets itself to release the chickens for the next game. It's a complicated process, but the automation of the decision dome was well worth it, reducing recording times by up to 15 minutes per game. It allows us to bring back a fan favorite while still keeping the show moving. I'd like to give a special shout out to Skyo and Hunt and Doom for their help during the research phase of the project. As always, let me know what you think in the comments, and let me know if there's anything I could have explained better. I've been Avondale with the Decision Dome 2.0. Thanks for watching.